Hello friends, welcome to the course of Code Igniter for RESTful API Development using Silt Authentication. From this video session guys, we're going to start our API development processes and the first we will start called Add Student API Method. Back to editor. So successfully, in our previous videos, we had completed all the settings of controller, model and routes. Now this time, we'll start on the work of Add Student API. Back to, back to editor, go inside app, controllers, api, api controller.php. So inside the last video, these are the methods what we had created. So we will start working on this method. So as we had discussed inside earlier video, that inside this method, we will receive form data and also this method will be hit using post request type. So inside form data, we need data for name, email, phone and profile image. Because before creating any student, these fields are required. Because ID is auto-incremented. If I go inside database table, click on students, go to structure. So as we can see, ID is auto-incremented column. But apart from that, we have name, email, phone and profile image. If we look at its null column, so I think that all these columns accepting null value but we want to make this name and email as mandatory fields. What I will do, go here inside database, migrations, this is migration file. So for this null equals to false, it means it will accept the value and also the email field is also required. So from these four fields like name, email, phone and profile image, these two fields are required. So what I will do go here, let's say php spark, migrate and refresh. So when we execute this command, it will go and drop our students table first from database and automatically recreate that. Press enter. So successfully, table now recreated. Go to database, click on structure. Now as you can see that name field is required because null equals to no and for this email null equals to no. Now to create any student inside this table we need only like required fields like name and email and these two fields are optional. So inside this add student method, go inside API controller class so inside add student method will receive all the data but will put validations only for name and email. So here, first of all, let's define our rules here and these are like required rules and rules will be for only for name and email. So the first rule will be required, email like required and also inside this email we want a valid email address and also we want that the email what we use to create any student, the email should be unique of each student. So here, I will use one more validation rule that is, is unique. So this unique is from students table. So I will copy the table name, table name dot column name. It means that the email value what we will use inside each row of a student should be unique throughout this students table. So successfully, now we have two validation rules for our two required fields that is name and email. Next we need to use and validate method so this means if this validate and inside this validate look at IntelliSense we need to pass our rules rules let's put a exclamation sign it means when we submit our data to this method and the validation fails so in that case this if block will be gets executed so here let's response equals to Inside this array, let's say status equals to false, message equals to, let's say this, validator, get errors. So while submission of data, if we get any errors, then these errors will be returned by this line of code and stored inside this message key. Let's say data equals to empty. So successfully, here we have our failed response. Now let's create another else block. It means we don't have any our form validation error messages like no error. 
So in this case, first of all, we need to check that if image has been uploaded or not. If image exists inside our data, first of all, we need to upload this image into a directory back to editor. So what I will do, first of all, I will check that the image exists or not. If image exists, then I will upload that image inside the images folder inside this public folder. So here, let's say image file equals to this request. We will use get file method to read our image file. And let's say that I will use profile image as the key where we will upload our image. So once we get the data, we will store inside this variable. And this, this will not be a normal variable, it's an object. So first of all, we need to fetch the image name from this object. So let's say image name image name equals to image file and we will call get name method so once we call this get name method it will go and return the image name from this object so inside this image name variable we'll get the image name as something called abc.png or xyz.jpg so what we want, let's say that we have uploaded a student1 image like abc.png and again we have uploaded a new entry of new student but with the same name of image. So image will be replaced with the newer one. So to solve this issue, what I will do, when we get the image name, we need to generate a random unique image name. So from this name, what I will do, let's separate this extension first. So here. Let's say temp array equals to, I will use explode function. Look at here, we need to pass separator. So dot, it means we want to separate these two values. Let's say image name, image name. So this temp array is going to contain an array. And inside this array, we'll have the values as ABC and PNG. So what we want, we want to get this extension. So here, let's a new image name equals to, we'll use round micro time. I will pass true value. So this line of code is going to return a unique random value and this value will assign with each image so that the new image should not be replaced with the older one. And finally, we'll add this image name with extension and the extension like png or jpg we can get from this temp array so here concatenate and i will use and function it's a php function so when we pass this array inside this and function automatically it will return the last value of that array so here from this array we can see png is the last value so inside this new image something like it will generate like a random integer value dot png so we can see that now abc.png now replaced with a new name and this new name will not be replaced with any other images now next i will use move method to upload this new image name inside the images directory inside public so here let's say if image file it means this is an object and by the help of that we'll call move method and inside this move method first of all i need to pass a folder name called images and this folder currently does not exist inside this public folder but once we execute that if this folder does not exist automatically this folder will create that inside this public folder and this move method automatically knows that we have to create this folder inside this public directory. So inside this images, concatenate and I will upload the new image name. So here we are uploading our image, it means new generated image inside this images directory. And automatically this move method knows that we need to place this images path inside this public folder. Now let's create else block, it means we have some error while uploading our image. So I will copy this response, go here, paste it here, let's say status equals to false and in this message, it's a failed to upload image. 
next go to this if block so here it means we have some data so what i will do i will create first the instance of model object so let's say student object equals to new student model and here let's say data equals to let's say name email phone and profile image now in this name we'll read our value from body parameters so this request will use get var method and inside this get var let's say name i will copy this line of code put it here for this email in the same pattern we need to read the email value from body parameters as well as the phone number but for this profile image as we know that this is the new image and this new image is uploading inside images directory so i will copy this path put it here for this profile image and put a new path so once we prepared all the data let's use if else block and i will call student object student object and call insert method look at intelligence we need to pass data here so inside this if block it means successfully we have inserted our data into table so in this case if i copy this response variable put it here status equals to true and in case of this message let's say that student saved successfully save these changes go here let's create another else block for our failed response put it here status equals to false failed to create a student or let's say failed to save a student so this is all the condition what we are saying when we have the profile image so let's say that we don't actually uploaded any image so in that case as you know this is an optional field so we need to save only the required fields like name email phone into our database table so what i will do here first of all i will check that this object let's say if each set this variable and it is not equals to empty empty so it means we have the profile image uploaded so what i will do i will go and wrap all these codes all these codes inside this if directory means if block otherwise go inside this else block go inside this else block it means we don't have any image uploaded so in that case what i will do i will go and copy this line of code like creating a student object putting all data together inside else block now next i will remove this profile image because as we know we don't have any image inside this else block and here we have some spelling mistake that is it's set only now here I will use if else block so inside this let's say student object I will call insert method and pass this data variable go here inside this if block again I will copy this if else block where we have prepared our response go inside this else block let's remove this block and put it here so successfully now we have two cases right here inside this add student method let's summarize one more time so in the very early stage we are checking our rules that these two fields are required like name and email so in case if we have submitted our data and we have some validation errors so it will go and store our response inside this response variable and this block of code indicates that we have some error inside our form data otherwise if we don't have any error it will go inside this else block inside this else block first it will check that if we have uploaded any image or not if image uploaded it will go inside this if block first it will retrieve the image name from this object and do all the stuff what we have implemented here otherwise suppose if we don't uploaded any image so in that case else block will get executed so first it will create an object prepare all the data and insert into our table so this is overall code of add student method and finally inside this add student method all we have done the implementation and finally we need to return our response here 
So what I will do, let's wrap this if block, else block at the end of this method. Here let's return this respond created, respond created and inside this we'll pass our response variable. So finally, we have done all the implementation of add student API method. In our coming video, we'll test this method while creating some students inside for the database table. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.